What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning, happy Tuesday, January 5th. We are five days into the new year and boy, did we get some fireworks last night. 2021 is going to be the year to digital asset. I told you that in 2020 and we are getting clear stated regulations coming out. Brian Brooks, the one and only has delivered once again. I feel as if Brian Brooks has taken the whole crypto community, the whole crypto world on his back. It is absolutely insane what he is doing and what is going on. We're going to get into that in a little bit, but we're going to make our way leading up to everything that went down last night. And boy, was it a game changer. First, let's go over the price. Bitcoin dominance keeps going down 68%. Exactly what we want to see. The market cap is it's you know it's kind of staying around the 865 billion range give or take a couple of billion here and there but you know what one trillion is going to be here before you know it the next little pump up we're gonna see a trillion get ready that's just the start of it this is easily a five to ten plus trillion dollar market we are just in the beginning bitcoin's currently sitting at 31,903 it's up 6.66 percent in the last 24 hours where Ethereum has taken out off. It is up over $8,000. It's up 42% in the last seven days, 10% in the last 24 hours. Uh, last year, I was gonna say early this year, but it's a new year. Last year, Ethereum was selling for about $91. That is a cool 10X. Wish we had those gains in the XRP community, but our time is coming and it's coming soon, people. XRP is up a little over 5%, sitting at 0.239. We'll call it 24 cents for the sake of this channel. So we have a 24 cent XRP. What do I think is going to happen? It's either one or two things. We're either going to get a final shakeout all the way back down to 17 cents. Or we are going to continue to go up and we are going to see a hefty, hefty move for XRP. I believe XRP, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but XRP is the only one out of the top 10 that has yet to experience a crazy multiplier gain like bitcoin ethereum litecoin bitcoin cash have already done our time is near our time is coming do not let this lawsuit throw a wrench into your plans do not let it throw you off your game you know what you hold just realize that at the end of the day one xrp will always equal one xrp that is right simple math right there huh Let's jump into a little bit of news before we get into the massive OCC comment statements and go over it. From T. Albatic XRP, Ripple customer, BNP Paribus acquires the Belgian Postal Service Bank. BPO sends money via Ripple customer. Maria, how interesting is this? An already customer, already on RippleNet, already using RippleNet, just acquired the Belgian Postal Service Group Bank to send or to further send money via Ripple customer Ria. If you don't think that they are tied up using RippleNet, if you don't think they're gonna use XRP, I don't know what to tell you, but the writing is on the wall, people. I'm gonna move over from coining 203. This is from August 20th, not too long ago. This is from Rep Tom Emmer, who's on Brad Gollinghouse. They were doing a whole uh, uh, town hall meeting. I just, I'm not going to play this whole thing for you. I'm going to play about the first 20 seconds. Listen to what Rep Tom Emmer has to say. It's funny. You said we moved on past Silk Road. Yeah, it's a long time ago. But there's a lot of members of Congress that still think of this in terms of Silk Road. And when you say over two years, first off, my, my position is uh, very clear. XRP is not a security. All right? Uh, well, you heard the man. XRP is not a security. Who is Rep. Tom Emmer? He's a husband, a father, a hockey fan, and a congressman for Minnesota's 6th District. Are you listening, SEC? I mean, it, I've been preaching this, or I've been talking about this for the past week. What Jay Clayton did was one of the dirtiest moves you were going to see go down in cryptocurrency history. He dropped a lawsuit. He dropped a dirty, a filthy lawsuit. Eight years in the making, he did nothing. But on his day out, he decides to drop a lawsuit. And the best part about it all is that he dropped his lawsuit. He doesn't even have to deal with it. He said, hey, you guys. Yeah, yeah, the ones that are still working for the SEC. 
Guess what? You can now deal with this. Good luck. I'm out of here. Have fun cleaning up my mess. Absolutely filthy move. Jay Clayton. I don't know how the man's living with himself right now. I don't know where the man is. I don't think we'll see, we're going to see Jay Clayton for a while. He knows what he did. It's crazy because there are lawsuits. There are people going after the SEC because they're supposed to be protecting the investor. And for eight years, they didn't protect anyone. And then you have Jay Clayton drop a lawsuit, get out, and you saw billions of dollars get lost overnight. Absolutely insanity. But let's keep going. From XRP underscore Hodel underscore Brian Brooks, what we do need is clarity about what's allowed. For example, whether banks can connect directly to blockchains as payment networks. The answer is yes. Listen to this interview. He's on with Laura Shin on Squawk Box on CNBC. Here we go. Brian, I wanted to follow up on, on the point you made in terms of you think good things are coming by the end of the Trump term for cryptocurrency. Are you in the camp who believes that more regulation in cryptocurrency will be a good thing overall for the industry? You know, look, I, I wouldn't say more regulation. This is not like you're writing a serial box where it talks about weight, not volume. I don't think we need 50 regulations instead of two. But what we do need is clarity about what's allowed. And so we need some guidance, for example, about whether banks can connect directly to blockchains as payment networks. The answer has to be yes, right? We need an answer to that. Can banks custody cryptocurrency so that institutions don't control adopting? And you saw what happened when we gave that clarity. So you have clarity across a variety of areas that I think you'll be seeing just in the next six to eight weeks, which will make it easier for crypto investors to know how to invest, to know how institutions can be in this asset class. And those are the things that are driving prices at this point. Now, we have been a bubble two years ago, but with more clarity, institutions that see this as a real thing are going to adopt that scale, which they've already started to do. So stay tuned. All right, so two things I want to go over that he just touched on. He said we saw a bubble in 2017, but with more clarity, and the clarity is what we are getting, we're going to see the institutions actually get in and keep a healthy market. I'm excited for that. As I have said, we are not going to see 90 to 95% retracements anymore when, when the big institutions get in. Big institutions get in, they start investing clients' money. How are they going to explain a 90 95% crash? In 2017, it was our money, the consumer's money. Now as the institutions get in, the dips become less and less greater. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying. The dips are the dips are less. They go down, they won't go down as far as they did previous. That's what I'm trying to say here. Institutional clients cannot come into this market and invest their clients money at 20,000 and this thing goes all the way back to a thousand they would not have jobs they would all get fired people would be pissed so as the institutions come in the prices are going to remain more stable brian brooks also touched on he goes we need to know whether banks can connect directly to blockchains as payment networks that is the big thing here people and he said we're going to get clarity within six to eight weeks. He he didn't waste any time. It is January 5th, four weeks after he made this announcement. And boom, what did we get? We got clarity. Then we go to Bank XRP. It says today the U.S. OCC, that's the uh, Brian Brooks's people, the Office of the Con Controlling of Currency, issued a letter clarifying that banks can engage in activities pitched by Ripple about five to six years ago. Here's the crazy part. As Bank just said, as Artillo said, Ripple offered this solution to banks five to six years ago, and they said that banks were wary, they didn't want to get involved because there were no regulations. Now it literally seems like the regulators are trolling Ripple. It seems as if Ripple has a big bullseye up on their back. He goes on to say, back in the day, Ripple pitched the utilization of the XRPL to banks. So they would issue fiat IOU stable coins before they were even cool and mainstream as XRPL gateways and f to facilitate payments to retail users. Here's a note from the OCC. It says the president's working group on financial markets recently accumulated a strong framework for ushering in an era of stable based financial infrastructures, identify important risk while allowing those risks to be managed in a technological agnostic way. 
Our letter removes any legal uncertainty about the authority of banks to connect the blockchains as validated notes and thereby transit stablecoin payments on behalf of customers who are increasingly demanding the speed, efficiency, interoperability, and low cost associated with these products. So this is very, very interesting. So most of you are thinking, XRP's doomed, XRP's dead, they're going to use stable coins. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Hear me out here. Let's talk about a stable coin. So you have a stable coin. What is it backed by? It's backed by a currency. So in this example, we're going to use a stable coin that's backed by the US dollar. You put up 100 US dollars, you get 100 US dollar stable coins. Now, JP Morgan wants to move money overseas to the Bank of London, who has 100 London stable coins backed by the currency over there, the pound. How are they going to move? How are you going to move two stable coins that are backed in different currencies? You're not. You need something to bridge it. You need something to bridge the London stablecoin with the US stablecoin. If you don't have a bridge, you still have the same problems that you that you have today. You have dormant capital sitting in Nostra Vostra accounts. Still the same issue. Did they fix a couple of things? Yeah, you're gonna have speed, you're gonna have transparency, it's gonna be on the blockchain, it's gonna be traceable. That's great, but you still have million or billions, trillions even, of dollars sitting in these dormant accounts. You still have the US holding foreign currency. You still have London holding foreign currency. They want to get away from this. They do not want to hold this foreign currency because look what happens to currency. Look at the Venezuelan currency. Look at some of these other countries. Their currency just includes overnight. So they want to get away from this. So how do I look at this? Simple. They're going to use the XRP ledger to issue stable coins. XRP will back these stable coins. So people buy up XRP, they collateralize them, boom. You have a stable coin, and since it's on the ledger, it's already being bridged via XRP. So money is flying, money is moving seamlessly. And now, what Brian Brooks just said was that these banks can now connect to blockchains, can now connect as validated nodes and can now start moving stable coins on behalf of their clients. Do you not see where this is going? And we get, we're get getting even deeper into this. As we date back to October 2nd, 2019, Joel Katz on XRP Chat says, one of the original use cases for the XRP ledger since 2012 was using the built-in decentralized exchange to exchange between stable coins and to exchange stable coins for XRP. Currently, only stable coins that have a backed issuer are supported. We, as an Ripple, are proposing adding a, a collateralized stablecoin feature to the XRP ledger. The key distinguishing property of this proposal is that stablecoins is always redeemable for XRP on the ledger from collateral pools. So, for example, if you hold one unit of a USD stablecoin, you can make on-ledger payments at any time just as you held $1 worth of XRP. And the beauty of this is we know that the XRP ledger is fast, it's scalable, it's cheap, and it's energy efficient. So why wouldn't you build on it? Why do you think Ripple's working with 40 to 50 central banks around the world? Because they are going to issue their stable coins on top of the ledger. Why did Brad Gollinghouse just state that yes, central banks are looking to build on top of the ledger. He says they don't even need to know about it because it's decentralized people. So Joel Katz goes on to say, we propose a scheme as follows. Anyone may place XRP into a position that they own. If the position is sufficiently collateralized, it may issue a stable coin. Position owners may adjust the XRP in a position so long as it maintains sufficient collateral. Position owners may issue and redeem stable coins and their positions so long it maintains sufficient collateral. Several undercollateralized positions may be taken by re-collateralizing them. Whoever does so keeps the remaining excess collateral. 
an order book mechanism will be used to permit the stablecoin to be automatically exchanged for XRP by redeeming it against the collateralized positions first. So what's Joel Katz saying here? He's pretty much, he's giving you a look at what the future is going to hold. The XRP ledger will host, will hold stable coins that will be collateralized by XRP. So what's gonna happen, you're gonna have banks, financial institutions, all connecting up to RippleNet, all gobbling up all the XRP that they can, creating these stable coins that is backed by XRP. And then they will be able to send their stable coins to any other banking group consortium that is already hooked up and connected to the XRP ledger and it will automatically be bridged via XRP. This is genius. Let's keep going. From XRP Mem, the OCC just told US banks they must treat permissionless open source blockchains like XRP the same way they treat SWIFT, ACH, and Fedwire. Let's fast forward to 50 seconds into this clip. This is Christine Lagarde. Have a listen at the 50 second mark. I got it queued up right here. Listen to what she says. This is from April 10th, 2019. Trust and stability of the system. How long has the XRP ledger been up and running? Has it have any failed transactions? No, this is more than just your Bitcoin. Yes, it is, Christine Lagarde. This is more than your Bitcoin and your Ethereum. This is about your XRP and moving value. And then the icing on the cake, breaking news last night, 12 hours ago. So just about this time. U.S. regulator federally chartered banks can facilitate stable payments and issue their own. Here is the article. It goes on to say the OCC letter indicates that banks and saving associations can now run crypto nodes and utilize associated stable coins for permissionable payment activity. This means banks can use public blockchains to validate, store, record, and settle payment transactions as long as they're compliant with existing laws. It also specifically mentions that the use of stable coins for transactions saying blockchain networks can mi can mitigate costs for cross-border transactions as cheaper faster and more efficient means of payment for that reason it's empowering banks to utilize blockchains and their stable coins for converting to and from fiat during remittances and issue stable coins if they choose cheaper faster and more efficient where do we always hear that line coming from Ripple and the XRP Ledger people. Then the regulator noted, likewise, a bank may use stablecoins to facilitate payment transactions for customers on an independent node verification network included by issuing a stablecoin and by exchanging that stablecoin for fiat currency, where XRP is going to breed a bridge, everyone. Hello, I don't know how much more clear that this can be. I'm not even sure much more clear is a word. I don't know how much clearer this can be. That's probably more like it. You need to think outside of the US here. These other countries have already granted permission to XRP as a currency. A stable coin is a currency. It just got the permissions. It just got the regulations. That's what Brian Brooks is telling us. Stable coins are currencies. They may be used now. All banks have the green light to connect up to blockchains to send currencies to send stable coins to other banks that are connected to the network this was one of the last pieces to come in now if you have bank of america who's going to connect to RippleNet, they're going to collateralize a stable coin their stable coin is going to be able to send be sent to another bank overseas that is already on RippleNet or that is connected up and they're going to be able to transfer to transfer currency and XRP is going to be able to bridge it. This is going to free up 
the nostril and vostral accounts from around the world. This is how liquidity is going to be made. Exciting times ahead. This is just the beginning. I have a feeling the OCC and Brian Brooks has more news coming out. Stay tuned. Listen. Watch what happens next. These, you're going to start getting a name, a list of banks who are going to start connecting up to these blockchains. And I wouldn't be surprised one bit if Ripple and the XRPL was thrown around. That's just me. But that's going to do for this video, everyone. Make sure you like. Please subscribe to the channel. Wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.